I'd like to welcome you all here. We certainly have a, a good crowd gathered to listen to Philip. And uh, as our, is our custom uh, when we present webinars in Australia, we want to acknowledge country. Um, and so I begin by acknowledging the First Nations people of our land, the traditional custodians of the land on which we are gathered, those of us who are gathered here in Australia. To acknowledge our gratitude that we share this land today, our sorrow for the costs of that sharing, and our hope that we can move to a place of justice and partnership together. And it is also our custom uh, to begin with the YCW prayer. So I invite you to join with me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, a worker like me, help me and all my fellow workers to think like you, to work with you, to pray through you, to live in you, to give to you all my strength and all my time. May your kingdom come in all our factories, workshops and offices and in all our homes. Be everywhere better known, better loved, better served. Deliver us forever from injustice and hatred, from evil and sin. May our souls remain in your grace today and may the soul of every worker who died and labours battlefield, rest in peace. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pat, um, for that introduction. Um, and now I will proceed to introduce Philip, who I had the pleasure of meeting long, much longer ago than I'd like to, to remember, back in the early 1980s. I believe it was in <laughs> Sydney <laughs> with, with Action for World Development. And uh, more recently, I happened, uh, by the benefit of airlines, to pass by Mauritius, and I, I was able to meet Philip again. And so I took the opportunity to invite him to join us for this webinar today. I'll just say a few words about Philip from what I know, but I'm sure he'll have much more to say himself. Uh, Philip studied for the priesthood in Rome before eventually going to study and work with an organisation in, in Paris called InnoDEP which stands for Ecumenical Institute for the Development of Peoples, which was founded by Paolo Freire. And I believe Philip followed in Paolo's footsteps at that organisation and later uh, also at the World Council of Churches in Geneva. Since that time, he's worked around the world, training grassroots community groups and organisers, for example, in Kenya and other African countries, and, under the, and he's written that up under the title of Training for Transformation, which is the title of his presentation tonight with a few of his colleagues uh, from Zimbabwe and South Africa, I believe. So we're really happy to have you here with us tonight, Philip. And I know that already there's a few people with us who have met you before as well. So we look forward to having a great chat and hearing from you. Thanks very much, Philip. And over to you. <laughs> Thank you for, for inviting me. That was wonderful visiting you after 40 years. Huh? The, the, what, I, what I would like to do now is doing the, the train for transformation way. That is going to be sharing, you know, uh, what, what you all around, yeah, what, what you have been experimenting. Uh, the, the, I, I would like to give a little background no? to what is now training for transformation. How you have uh, rivers wait, uh, meeting together. Uh, Anand Sali uh, had work had work in South Africa. They had met uh, Paulo Freire uh, in, a, in, a, in a seminar in in in, in, the, in the states, and then came back to work. And then afterwards, they was expelled from South Africa. And Anne worked with uh, Steve Biko uh, the, with the. Uh, Black, black, black movement, no? uh, black consciousness movement, and uh, Steve Biko. She, she always told me that Steve Biko gave the best explanation 
of what uh, Fregate wanted to do, which is fantastic now. Uh, the, the role which it has played in, in South Africa uh, with the Black Consciousness Movement. Uh, so the I, I worked in my country. I was I was a chaplain no, for the the adult uh, YCW, not YCW, the adult CW. And uh, so I, I, I and, and in Rome I was uh, I, I I was uh, what, what I initiated into uh, the, the revision de vie, no revision of life, with with my, with the with the friends who were. Uh, with the Christian Christian workers in France, so when I came back, I was a chaplain, you know, and uh, and I used a lot the, the what revision of life, the see judge and act. No? And uh, when when I was working with the trade union, I, I had the 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 church woman to join the struggle with the trade union because I stayed outside for that time. And uh, we were trying to find out what was happening. Why is it that uh, people who have been oppressed, when they when they came into power, they became oppressors? This is this was one of the big questions for us involved in the training. And then uh, we were we were reading like mad, not to find some answers from a small small place. And then we we had that book of, of, of Paulo Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, and we said, ah, aha, that's it, no. Uh, he really puts his finger on what it is, no? With his word about about uh, the oppressor, the oppressed, uh, housing the oppressor, and this whole thing about education, being banking education, no? And uh, so we read all that we can, and then we wanted to know how to do that, and uh, and then this is when I learned that there, there was a, there was a an institute in Paris where Paulo Freire, which, Paulo Freire was there. So I tried to, to to go there. In fact, I was admitted for six months for training, and I I spent twelve years there, <laughs> renewing every year because uh, I was one of the few speaking very bad English, but the only speaking English, <laughs> because the many the people were from France and from and from uh, the uh, Latin America. The I mean one of the questions which I feel is in the background, no? uh, the link between. Uh, See Judge and Act, which I use and still use, no? and uh, Freire. No? Uh, and I, I think I read the question somewhere. What is the what is the methodology of Freire? There is no methodology for Freire for me. Speaking about transformation, there is the methodology of unhope and salitimal. <laughs> what I mean by that, no? uh, Freire has those intuitions, and uh, I'll, I'll just recall some of them. No. Uh, to so you know, that uh, the base the base you know, is this dialogue that we have to dialogue you no know, the, the, that both teachers teachers and learners uh, learn learn together and then the whole thing about critical consciousness and understand what's happening understands the power structures and fight for 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 justice you no know? and then also you have this uh, the action reflection how we do that action reflection action yeah. And uh, the other, but well, this is what what was some people call the principles of Freire. You no, know? I don't know whether that's the correct word. And then his dream about uh, the growing humanity, that education, the role is how do we grow together, most teachers, and uh, how do we grow together? And then you have the problem posing. How do we do that? Problem posing, not giving answers, not giving answers. The and all this is through through dialogue, and and the key for him is liberation. Education is about liberation from oppression, and uh, and for building a world of justice. So for me, the, these are these are the principles of it. It's not a methodology. So we had to find out how to do that, and and the inner depth was created to get people from various countries, Latin America, India. Uh, Europe, sharing how are they doing it. Uh, but most of the discussions was more on a kind of uh, more intellectual. It was very important, not trying to understand deepen. And then Alan Sali came over. The so oh the, the, for for me, uh, Paulo Freire was was inspiring us, huh? and so we had to find ways of how to make what he was saying. The, the, how, how do make do, do you translate it into the real world? 
And this is what our team in, in France was trying to do and also learning from, from teams from, from other countries. And uh, in, in, in the, as I said, the, 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 the word training for transformation came, came late when the books came out. But uh, when I when I was uh, over there, no, in uh, in 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 Australia, in uh, in New Zealand, what we were talking about was more uh, structural analysis. How did that come about? This came about because I work in the Philippines, and in the Philippines, uh, the church people were quite involved, very much involved in the struggle against Marcos, and uh, the the what the the the, the 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 party leading the struggle was was the the Philippine Communist Party, which was more Maoist. And then the church people were trying to understand what is the link with their faith. You no, know, how do they analyze? So this is where we developed the, the that was developed the structural analysis. analysis. And in the Philippines, the other aspect which was very strong there is people's power. Solalinsky coming from the states. Yeah? So what I'm trying to say is. The, the that uh, what is now uh, uh, during port transformation is a combination of lots and lots of of experience of, of experiments huh? it is not something which has been done by by one person but it has been a learning together and uh, and uh, it, that, that that line no? that line of training for transformation is now 50 years old we had celebrated as 50 years old and this is why I ask uh, Tombi and Jinoka, who are now the leading of the center, uh, to, 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 to share with you how what they are doing today, because the whole thing is, is what, what is being done to make the, what those what, what uh, Paulo Freire has been saying, uh, translating it into, into action. Uh, is that okay? Yes, sure. Okay. Would you like to introduce them? Yeah, yep. Yep. Okay. Are you okay? Or uh, do you want to introduce your colleagues immediately, or would you, would you prefer to take questions? If there are any questions, I'll take one or two questions and then and pass over to. Somebody has got something in the chat, I think. Okay. Oh, somebody's asking if it's being recorded. Yes, it is being recorded. Yes. It is recorded for those that want to listen to it again later. Um, yeah, I don't. I cannot see if there's anybody. If you if you do wish to ask a question, feel free to um, just jump in because it's a bit hard to see everybody on the screen from where I am. Yeah, or, or we can have the questions later on if you. Yeah, want. we can have the questions later. Maybe. Yep, that would be good. Yep. All right, then yes. maybe we can hear from your colleagues. That'd be great. Yep. Yes, yeah, so so the 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 two are there is Tombi. Can 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 we can I see her? Tombi, can can you okay. take over? Can, can you, you see present me? yourself? I know you don't want me to introduce you, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is not fair. You can introduce me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um. For me, it's um, a privilege and a blessing to be in this space with all of you. I can only hope that you understand my English because I am not English. I will try my best so that you can hear me and understand what I am trying to share with you. So far, can you hear me? You can just nod your head. So yeah, I grow in confidence when you do that. Thank you. My name is Mtombi. I am from Zimbabwe. I, um, I started working with Training for Transformation without knowing it. I met a woman who had been to Delta and we were in the Ministry of Community Development. We went to the villages. We sat under the trees. 
we listened to the narratives of women. They recorded, they wrote their stories. They acted them out. Arts and creativity was part of the dialogue, their language. This space was so safe for them to express themselves. But my aha moment was how to break the silence with training for transformation. But I will not go there. Um, just for women to document their stories, their worries, and use those documented stories to find solutions and take themselves out of the pain. For example, a community that we worked with in Gokwe, women never spoke when we went into the meeting with men. They were digging on the ground, never looking anybody in the face. So my friend said to me, when the women were going to fetch water, she said, we go and fetch water. It did not make sense to me why I was supposed to fetch water with women who were cooking for us. She said, we go. So we went. When we go to the river, the women jumped into the river to swim. And for me, it was, it's not safe. It's muddy. It's dirty. I'm not going to go in. And my friend undressed herself and she jumped in. She was white in the skin color. And I was there with, and she was in the river swimming. And I thought, oh my God, it's up to you. She's trying to be black. But then I realized I was isolated and I jumped into the river too. That swimming space became so safe for women and they opened up and they told us, we discovered 90% of the women in that community were illiterate. And with them designed a process of not just literacy, but economic literacy, political literacy. Two decades after that, I went back to the village. The village councillor was a woman, the village head. So that's training for transformation. Why did I start with this story, because what we discovered and what made it to grow the way it is done now in 63 countries and globally is because in those safe spaces, people find their voice by telling their narratives in their language, feeling they are safe, they can be listened to. So that, that power of voice becomes the spirit that carries them to do something new. Um, a Muslim young woman was in the course with a Christian young woman. We put the Quran, the Gita, and the Bible in the place. The Christian young woman ran to the Quran. Hey, this is something. I want to, to read it. I want to understand Muhammad. And the Muslim young woman said, Stop it, you evil woman. You will die because you have tested the prophet. It became a conflict spiritual dialogue. However, because of the process of who am I? What am I? Why am I in this space? The, the dialogues turned, the conflict turned into an opportunity to understand or to question, by the way, who is God? Is God a Muslim? Is God a Jew? Is God a Christian? Where does God live? And I recall one of the young persons who was a, a pastor was put in a room with a Muslim imam and a, a Christian, a father, 
from the Catholic Church, and he was from the Protestant. And they learned to pray together. Because then breaking these pre uh, religious walls that are created to block spirituality. With that, the young woman, I talked about the Muslim young woman. When she went back home, she started visiting the priests, the evangelists from the Pentecostal church, the imams, and stop the conflict in the Northern Kenya. To this day, the women work together, the communities work together, the schools work together. We get these stories as they come. Why am I sharing with you this? Because this is the basis and the fundamental uh, practice that Anne and Sally simplified in training for transformation. When you are working in development, it is not just work. It's spiritually inspired way of serving by questioning injustice. So people come to TFT wounded, but when they go back, they become own liberators with their own people, breaking the culture of silence, facilitating dialogues, and through that, the curiosity grows and everybody wants to know, how did you get to do this? So when I became the director of training for transformation, well, it, the original plan was to train leaders from organizations so that they go back and build movements, um, build processes with people. But that was two or three people in an organization. And in that process, when they go back, they became too powerful and sometimes get expelled from the organization. So what we did was to take the training to the organization so that that conflict between leadership and the people that were in the training could be dissolved. Little did we know that that process would be more powerful than selecting individuals because then the whole organization would look at their purpose in development, not only as action and employment, but also as spiritual calling. And through that process, then we, we realized that organizations also preferred for the board members to be part of it, for everybody and for the communities. So the ripple effect in that the, the growing of the community and the change became so fast. For instance, when we went to Indonesia, to Western Papua, which was a liberation, which still is a liberation movement, people are still in the struggle. Working with um, the organization and the freedom fighters, they designed a 50 year plan, which is in East it's 10th year implementation, and they have registered a training for transformation, Western Papua, to work with both freedom fighters, community activists, and intellectuals. That's the power of the dialogue, the power of pe putting people in the center of their own liberation. And um, what does Freire say? Take away the culture of silence. Um, yeah, then COVID came while we were busy spreading and traveling to countries and working with organizations. COVID put a stop to in person places to our traveling. We were already in like 53, 60 countries. COVID came and put a stop to that. We had to rethink, and for that. I had to step down. I was the third generation leader in training, second generation leader in training for transformation. We had to put something, someone young and vibrant, who, by the way, is also a grail woman. So am I. So was Anne Hope and Sally Timmel. 
our quest is simple. How do we serve as women in our spiritual search to achieve justice, even if it is in small ways? So here is another great woman, Jinoka. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ntombe. Thank you, everyone. Uh, stepping in, in the space with people like Philippe or Ntombe has been a journey for me. I'm originally from Portugal, but I've been working with Ntombe in the past 15 years in training for transformation. Philippe is also an inspiration to us. Some of these books that we are talking about, some of the two we always say they were developed by Philippa, and while participants grapple with the complexity of Gramsci, for example, Philippe simplified in a dynamic model of society that we keep on using. So, so there I am in the space in the middle of COVID with this transitional leadership processes and what we decided to do in this intergenerational leadership process was to start working with the younger generation. We saw the needs and we saw that out there, uh, the demand was high and the, the youth was in turmoil, huh? questioning, what is the world we live in? How can we go from what we got from previous generations to a better future? How can we heal the earth? How can we combat unemployment and injustices? And so has Ntombi emphasized, training for transformation provided that safe space. While everybody is on the business of WhatsApp, going this, that, during a period where people were forced to stop youth could question themselves. So from the 30 that we used to train uh, per year, we start training in a decentralized manner while we have local experts and facilitators in 12 countries with smaller groups of youth. And it's amazing the power of voice that youth take from these spaces and more than uh, other adults, they are able to act upon their reality. Just the other day in June, we were in these conversations and from the processes, locally with their facilitators, a young man says, I'm going to quit drugs because in this holistic approach, I'm understanding how it is affecting not only myself, but my relationships my community, the nation at the wider, and even the environment. And that is a ha-ha moment for, for me, because to the start, start to, to uh, cut substance abuse, it's not an easy journey. Another one from Zambia, through this process is that people say, now we are always in dependency of the North. Huh? Now the technology, why don't we produce our own technology? Why are we buying cell phones from the north? Why we are doing this and that? And he decided that another young man in Tanzania to, to start some, something called digital youth. While they empower themselves as group on technology knowledge, so that there's a thought of decolonization from the youth themselves into the world. And the examples can go uh, forever. Some of the youth we work with in Angola, they manage through a process of two years to decrease gender-based violence in six communities. And you might think, ah, how real is this? If it was an external impact study done by the EU that comes back to us. And what is for me a training for transformation is this space that allow us to, to grow, to question ourselves constantly, to be in the world positioning as clearly and acting together towards common solutions that are sustainable. 
Now, it is not an easy process and it is experimental. Experiential. So we can talk, Philip can talk, Ntombi can talk. We have Carmen here also from the team, or Nafta uh, uh, can talk. But it is a process that uh, uh, if we do not experiment, we won't fully comprehend because it's a psychosocial process linked as well with uh, 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 intellectual knowledge different from the academic knowledge. I was sharing with Ntombi yesterday, look, it was in first in one of these spaces that was mainly within the grail, but with the training for transformation approach that myself at 25, I was able to think by myself. With all the academic studies I had done at that time, I felt harshly that banking that quote, quote this one, quote the other one, da, da, da. and you see that reproduced in the society. Through these methods of questioning, it allows the individual to really go to, it, to the core Emerge someone new. I, the things I was sharing in those rooms, they were acknowledged. Rinoka, your thinking uh, uh, makes sense. Da, da, da. And you, some, you somehow feel acknowledged and that your voice is different from every, any other human being in the world. And that made the difference for me. And I could even ask Carmen and Nafta if they want to say one thing that it makes difference in uh, training for transformation for them before we go any further. Hi, everyone. Thank Hi. you, Tanoka. <laughs> Thank you, Tanoka. Um, I think wow there are so many things for me my my start with with tft was just the ability to be okay with me and it it's a journey and we don't know where the where the where the journey ends but just accepting myself with all my flaws and just my own humanity with being able to make mistakes and say yes to things that I fear, that I am scared of being able to acknowledge that I have fears and it's okay because you are taught that this is yes and this is no and this is right and this is wrong and you only follow certain steps, you only do certain things. But then with CFT, it gives you that courage to say that Actually, I can explore a bit. I can explore my own humanity. And if things don't go the way I expect it, it's okay. I can just try another way. So, yeah, CFT just gives you that, that freedom to just accept things about yourself. To first see yourself. See yourself for who you are and then accept yourself. But it's a constant process and... It's such a blessing to be in this space. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful speakers. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yes. Great to hear that experience from more than one country mostly from Africa. Um, uh, yeah, some, um, I'm from some, Oh, sorry, you're going to speak too? Yes, go go for it. Yep, sorry about that. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm Naftal from Mozambique. Um, and and I, I also, I was also part of the process of TFT. I've done TFT and I'm still with TFT. Uh, and one of the things um, which uh, has been a major change in me, uh, something that became my way of being, is uh, uh, finding my own voice anyway. Um, a part of that, um, 
I, 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 I have done theology and I'm, I'm, I'm also serving as a pastor. But when I was in school, I learned a lot of theory um, about how to do good, how to do justice. But uh, the actual thing or the actual action, I, 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 I learned with TFT process itself. Uh, so it, and it has been a major change in me. Um, and also the impact, I see better the impact of uh, of the work that I do, uh, mainly with young people. I was part of those who started a, a, a movement of young young people in school um, uh, um, against drug abuse. So um, you are muted. Yes. Um, and the, uh, right now uh, I'm, I'm still in the process um, and learning more and more and how to be uh, a different a different space. Uh, just finding my own voice uh, has been a major change uh, in me. Um, thank you so much. So, uh, Stefan, I don't know if we have time to show just a short movie from Anansali, the founder. Sure. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, okay. I, I don't know if I have to, who, who will share it? Let's, I have, maybe have to give I, it. I, I can share from my side. Okay. Show. Yep. Otherwise, if it's not working, I'll make you co-host. So it is not allowing my sign. Yeah, I think I have to. Um, I can't, where is your? I cannot see your name. Sorry. Um, where is your name? Uh, yeah, it's called G I N O C A. Yeah. I'm gonna look for you on the screen. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Tinoka uh, there. Okay. I'll try and empower you. Empower. Allow to record. <sighs> Uh, so long the the movie is just four minutes and yep. it's our founders and let me see if i can do it Let's make a host i'll make a co-host you should be able to you should be able to um share it now yep okay thank you so much it's just uh, uh the founders we've been speaking about Anne and sally and we had Philippe, uh, Tombi, and as a, young, a younger generation. And we would like also for you to, those who did not meet and and Sally, uh, a bit uh, of their voices as well. Can you hear? Not right now. No. And now? No, we can't hear. No, we can't hear. No. Can't hear. Yes. We can't hear, Jinoka. Mm -hmm. Not Maybe at all. You should, you should try. Not at all. We can see the, 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 the body image. language. Yeah. Let me check. Uh, click on share sound. I don't know why. Uh, I think that's a wonderful phrase, Keith. Reading your reality, understanding the complexity, why are things as they are, and the history, making things different in the future. You know, there's that lovely saying, some people see things as they are and they ask why. Others see them as they are, and they are, as they might be, and they ask, why not? Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole thing of the planning. Why not a different kind of society? Why can't we have a society where the fundamental human needs of every man, woman, and child are met? Why can't we? And if you understand why we can't, because we can, actually. We could if we were made certain things. And so it's to build that sense of hope 
about a future possibility. Now these are things, the, one, the part we've described now is a wonderful way of waking up communities. We had hundreds of communities in Kenya, we've done 270 five-day workshops in seven years. And so many communities would get very, very excited and they would start all <coughs> sorts of different projects, local projects. But of course, actually we're aiming beyond a series of nice little local projects. Those are important, they give people hope, they give people a sense that life can be different. But we also want a movement for change to deal with far greater changes than this. And that takes a lot more. Social economic analysis, um, all kinds of skills of leadership, dealing with conflict, because you're sure to get quite a lot of conflict, and building a movement. And so it's all geared towards that, but this is the sort of first step of it. I think that there's, I think we often are not very good at looking at history. When is the historical moment for something? And it's very, I mean, why did Egypt erupt when it erupted? Why is, why did whatever, whatever happen when it happened? There are historical moments. I think if we don't have that commitment to keep on uh, tilling the soil, tilling the soil, popular education, popular education, linking people where we can link people and building those links. But it, at a certain critical mass, it will happen. We just have to have faith. And one of the things that I have to say uh, is that development, this kind of work is a spiritual exercise. This is about commitment for the long haul and when you and you and it's self reflection and if it's if not deeply rooted in our own belief and faith. And I don't mean religious doctrine and all that, but it is motivated out of something that keeps us going day in, day out. So so I think we have to trust in historical moments. There are, we've done a historicizing of popular education. There are times when it's high and times when it's low. But if you're doing good popular education, you're helping communities to think for themselves, to speak for themselves, to start to lobby for themselves, to start to look at what the system, what is the system that they're in, uh, understanding what the uh, institutions that hold that system together, that keep them domesticated, as Frere would call it. And so to help them, to, to, as we do that, and continue to do that, help people to become not domesticated, uh, but really... But also, I think the very important thing is to build a common vision, and that you're constantly building a common vision of the kind of society that you're working towards. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of build each other's vision together and build each other's hope that it's possible. Yeah. Which could be a little alternatives. There shouldn't be a project like an onion garden and is the end in itself. What is that for? What is it for? So this was just a short movie. So that we hear Anne and Sally's voices. So handing over to whoever is leading. Thank you very much, Dinoka. Yes, well, that's fantastic. Yeah, so, so many rich experiences there. And I see already in the chat, maybe you can have a look. Um, there's a couple of questions there already from um, Dave, David Maloney. Would you like to speak to your question or comments? Uh, look, it's a bit convoluted, I suppose, but basically I was just trying to get a, the first part was just trying to get a sense of whether it's roughly correct um, to do as experimentation in different places. And uh, I believe in, I don't know if it was unique, but unique to Australia and New Zealand, there was structural analysis, including Gramsci, the Philippines, Solinsky, uh, South Africa, Black Consciousness, and all comes under the heading of training for transformation. Um, so I was just wondering um, which, if that's roughly correct, uh, um, which if any of those have weathered better over time, which is still being worked on and, and active. We've heard examples of uh, how the how the method is is uh, 
lived uh, in particular situations uh, through different people, finding their voice and so forth. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's and, and the other question I've got is how does it, how does this relate to faith? Well, I think I'm not sure who 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 of our panelists would like to pick up that point. Either we, maybe Philip or uh, Jinaka or Ndombi, uh, whoever would like to respond. Philip, would you like to start, perhaps? Yeah. I prefer the young people to answer. Oh, <laughs> this you want the young people. All right. Okay. <laughs> they are the leaders of today eh? and tomorrow. I hand over to Ntombi. <laughs> He's willing. Well, Ntombi is not so young, so we can't do that. But let me clarify the question first. Um, are you asking how this is related to Freire or how this is um, con reincarnation of uh, Freire's legacy. Um, can you clarify that for me before I respond? Oh, ah, yeah, well, I'm just relating to Freire, yeah. Okay. Here is um, an illustration from Betty Hooks. She was invited when Freire was giving a lecture and other people that were present thought, ah, Betty Hooks is too, too nonsensical. She can't speak when Freddie is speaking. So they tried to shut her down. And Freddie noticed that and said, let her speak. If this process of conscientization is not questioned, then it's not worth it. So according to Freire, the, the process or the thinking is not the end, but it's the beginning of co-creating. So while we say the influence is from Freire, but Freire was open to people to contextualize it, recreate it, through their dialogues, making themselves central in their own struggle. I, I, I remember one student said, oh, this is the first place where my knowledge matters, where I'm realizing I can co-create my learning process. So there is no, what I'm trying to say is that working with Freire, it's an open space to explore our voices, to break the silence. I think he set that pace that we are not objects. We are subjects of our destiny and we have to co-create it again and again. And nobody does it for another. So hence, that's how the process gets linked to Freire. Structurally, the ability to question who is sitting where, at what level, and what power do they have to make decisions? And why are they there? How are the decisions affecting the decisions they make? How are they affecting me? Is it good for me? Is it good for my family? Is it good for my community? Is it good for me? That's how simple the conversations take place. And because of that, for young people, they go out and they start a new school because the school is too far. And they enroll and they, they learn about the policies of registration while the school is running because they know they have to make decisions themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Don't I would like to add something. Don't, yep, go. <laughs> I think Frederick should, should thank Adam Sally so, so that so many people know of him, no? Because as I said, she she they, they were the ones who tried to really start applying. But for me, it's, it's not about who says what, no? As I was saying, for me, for, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a priest. I have long, lots of training, lots of reading, and lots of studying, you know. 
<laughs> so I don't believe in 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 I mean in people suppose some this one or that one. For me, what is important for me, what what for broad, is uh, is bringing together several elements which other people will say no. Is what is education? That education is growing together. Education, there's no education if there's no dialogue. There's no education if there's no critical consciousness. No education if, if there is, is not that sharing of values. No education if there is not liberation. So for how do we apply? Those are performing principles. That's why I say principles. Uh, the, and I don't I don't like that thing about uh, a methodology. The, he doesn't have any methodology. I read him. I mean, I say 12 years at the Institute. I did not see any methodology. And as as uh, as uh, Tompi said, uh, we we had those meetings uh, twice th twice or three times a year where he was present, and then people paid expensive, you know, to to come to to Paris, and then <laughs> one day uh, so somebody from Sri Lanka, I remember him very well. He said, "Paolo, we want to listen to you, all those things we know," and he said, "I'm listening. I am listening. Why don't you listen better?" Yeah. So for this is this is for me what I say for you, you know he he doesn't impose if he, the the other aspect of of that thing about Freire is that many of these of the tools we have which have been developed for for example a problem posing you need tools for that many of these tools when we do them we say Freire and people think ah the Freire invented this one Freire no I mean no. Freire had the, the the inspiration and is inspiring, and 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 I would say the the dream. I don't know how you call that, and then we make it real. I don't know whether when he was a minister in 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 Sao Paulo, he really he, he succeeded in making his dream real. But it's still inspiring, and as as you see today, you know the after fifty years, no, uh, this kind of approach using that. that Thing of query is people. It's it, it's always being renewed. And you were saying whether well, it is a re, it's not a reincarnation, or or else it has always been reincarnated. It has always been reinvented. Thank you. Thank thanks, Philip. Um, I see Tony um, Smith. You shared something about uh, using training for transformation in Tasmania. Would you like to share something about that? Yeah, that, that'll be my privilege. Um, <clears throat> um, I've been appointed the, the Northern Facilitator for Laudate Sea and the goals up here in the northern part of Tasmania. And um, the process that I actually use here is based very much around Sea Judge and Act. Uh, Laudate Sea, um, the Pope's uh, encyclical, is all about sea judge and act. It's at the heart of it. And each of the goals here um, that's in that particular document, we, we called upon to implement them within our parishes and within our schools and particularly within our families. And th this is the area that I work on. And it's important in the sense that there are so many people that are actually not aware of the realities of what's actually happening in our world and what we are doing to creation and how this is affecting people. Uh, we can see now through climate change and the stuff that's going on in the Northern Hemisphere, um, there are some terrible things that are coming about. But there is still hope within all of this there's work that can actually be done to mitigate against this. And in our communities, we need to be working on this. So this is this is the role that I use coming out of, uh, I was a YCW coordinator in South Africa in the early 70s uh, for a number of years with Father Danka. And uh, I, I have a feeling that I actually met Philip uh, at some stage, he um, there was a group that actually introduced uh, training for transformation uh, in South Africa, and that would have been in the 
that would have been in the uh, the early nineties, particularly. Um, and I've always used. I've got. I've actually got the books, um, which I've been using for many years. Um, it, they are superb. They really explain the need for each of us to walk up the river and to find out what is exactly happening and why things are happening in terms of sea judge and apple. So, yeah, so I just wanted to share that. Sorry, my Thank voice, I've got, I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a problem. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just a comment from Pat. Um, many years ago, I, I was given the training for transformation by a grail lady from uh, Kenya, uh, Therese Bagley was her name. Um, but I found that uh, while I I devoured that, I ha or have all three copies, four copies, I think, three. Um, but what I found missing was that what I would call the micro processes of starting, you know, what basically is the Sea Judge Act process. The micro processes are, might be something like, um, I'm experiencing some injustice somewhere in my community and it's starting with me, perhaps my concern, or I want to start a community garden. So how it's the steps and of moving towards that bigger picture and um, group, I suppose. So starting with those micro steps of how to link with others to share your concern or what it is you want to do, how you're going to do it, work together to develop a plan of action, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and my wonderful lecturer at uni had actually uh, used a little framework which he called the 013. And the O mm -hmm. was me with the concern, 01, I link with somebody else. And that's a private matter. One, just us, that one relationship. But when we get into 013, then you've got a public relationship and it can grow exponentially. So, and we work together around a common goal to change something that we want to change. So I think the micro processes are really important in terms of justice, that, that the people with the concern are the ones who are actually doing the work and sometimes those of us who are more experienced will walk along with them to support them or whatever. So thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Pat. Uh, as I say, if others would like to jump in and comment or ask a question, feel free to do so. But I would, I'll take the opportunity myself to ask a question, and that is because I've heard that there is uh, training for transformation now in 50 or 60 countries. So uh, I'm not sure who to ask, Jinoka or um, Tombi, or um, who, is, is, do you have a kind of a international coordination and how, how, how do you all work together, those 50 or so countries? Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, okay, I can come in on that one. So... <clears throat> So what we have around now is mainly we work together in a decentralized manner, which will have local facilitators and we organize a kind of a think well that we together develop a curriculum so that uh, uh, first is contextualized to the country and then in the country's language, if possible, but we develop together self-awareness, gender, uh, climate change, well, whatever the issues and the generative issues that are found, we implement each one in their own spaces. That we are not working with the 60 countries that Ntombi or whoever named, they there where training for transformation is spread out. We are to, uh, we are working directly with 15 countries and the, the, the main, uh, okay, we would say the mother, whatever would be South Africa, but we are decentralizing more and more. Papua, Western Papua has already a training for transformation uh, center. Nigeria has an institute for social transformation. And these are initiatives brought out 
And the beauty of it is the ownership. So we provide somehow still the, the, the spices, the, the, the growing together in the spaces because it's a pro process where people take ownership of their own uh, uh, development processes. They end up creating initiatives that is beyond that. Huh? We question ourselves at a certain point, what is our purpose now? <laughs> Because with decentralization and ownership, but uh, all over, uh, people keep on saying, no, we need constant upskilling with each other because ideas and the signs of the times uh, shift. To, to answer your question, the coordination is with this younger team you, you saw here and with around 30, 40 facilitators that are from Sudan, Zambia, and then I could Zimbabwe or whatever the list we can Nigeria, India, Western Papua. We can uh, we are we are widening in this uh, youth training now that we had. We had a new group from Sulawesi. I, I gather there are people here from Asian, not where I'm based, but Sulawesi in Indonesia. Then it is from another group that uh, just started. So it's a kind of a fluid thing. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we kind of coordinate the process. Thanks very much. Could I just follow up uh, uh, since we're talking on this? Um, my mum used to be in the Grail in Australia long ago wow. before I was born. <laughs> so I'm just interested <laughs> in this, have a personal interest also in the, in the Grail. And uh, sort of, I guess that's kind of part of my own personal inspiration, if you like, from my mum. But I'm interested to know, like, how is the Grail involved in all this? Knock, knock. Isn't Tombi, is me or you? <laughs> what? Um, I will start and you can come in, Jinoka. Um, the Grail... Your camera is um, off, Tombi. Your camera is off. Oh, yeah. gosh. Sorry. Let me see if I can get my face for you guys to see. Right. Um, the Grail is um, is an international movement. We're not going to go to unpack it, but it is it is or it was originally um, a gathering of women, professional women of faith. It started by a Jesuit priest called um, Van Kigen from the Netherlands in the. We, we were 100 years last year. In 2022, we celebrated 100 years. The core of the grail here is that um, these professional women, they live a life of searching how to save with and on the side of the oppressed to achieve justice. So in their quest to save, Anne Pope and Sally Timid, Anne was once a president of the Grail International. In their quest to save, they initiated this process as Philippi has um, already given that background. The Training for Transformation um, documentation came out of their experience in Kenya. As grail women, they decided to document and say, this process has been so powerful in terms of how to simplify what Freire was saying and how to make it practical then. And it was their way of living their spirituality as grail. So when it became, when the books were written, then the name changed to Training for Transformation from Delta to Training for Transformation. And then it was formalized like that. But for me uh, to be part of that process, I it was launched at the Grail Center in the Western Cape in South Africa. I facilitated by two grail women who were Anne and Sally, and other grail women came to be part of that. 
and I'm not going to talk about how I became Grail, but I became very curious about these women whose life was about saving. From my experience from the government, working in the government of Zimbabwe with a Grail woman. So as we, we speak now, Training for Transformation is still based in terms of practice on the Grail values of justice of common good, of hope, of self-awareness, which is which she was saying, uh, the micro, which is yourself, who are you? Why are you here? What is your purpose? Who do you belong? Who else is there with you? Who do you see what you can do? So the spirit of the grail forms the fundamental pillars that are adaptive to the context of the people that find themselves in the process of training for transformation. By the way, somebody, some professor once told me, hey, you can train dogs, but you can't train human beings because they already are experienced. And human beings, you can just coach. My understanding from that, um, since that day was that training for transformation combines both coaching and training in terms of what you can't do that you need to learn, but in terms of that which you are doing that you need, you can do better. So that is the spirit <laughs> of the grail and fundamentally pillars of training for transformation. Thank you. Chinoka, you, you want to, Thank you. to make a comment? I'd like to come, make a comment. Is that okay? Sure. Go for it. Yep. Uh, my na my name's right. Maro Denikola. Um, I was involved with uh, Action for World Development uh, in the 70s and 80s and was trained in structural analysis by Stuart Reed in uh, Melbourne together with a number of other people and uh, have been using uh, that, uh, Philippe, in, uh, in many contexts uh, over more than 40 years, including a, a stint with something called the Animation Project in uh, public housing estates uh, here in Sydney. So I have some experience, if you like, of both structural analysis and also the, the training for transformation book. So, so that's my background. I, in, in a sense, I'd like to issue a warning. I, my experience of working uh, for justice in, in the best that I can over many years is that, that things are getting harder in a way. I, I live in hope. Uh, my spirituality is one of hope, but I think things are getting harder. And I don't underestimate the capacity of the systems that we're up against to kind of absorb sometimes the best of what it is that we have to offer and to domesticate it. And I, yeah. I think that in a way, one of the risks of anything uh, that's good, including training for transformation, is it can be technologized. If we're not careful, it can become just another technology uh, for training in mainstream managerial senses rather than training in conscientizing kind of senses. Um, it, it, so in a way, that the training for transformation books are both good but dangerous if you like if you if you just treat them as a as a technology and i think the the only two ways that i know of of not collaborating with the technological approach to me the heart of it is listening and um, you know i continue to learn how to listen and uh, because listening is about creating space and it's only when that space is created that something interesting uh, uh, happens the other one is that uh, I think there has to be a genuine loss of power. And, and so I think it's not easy to do training for transformation, I think. And it's not easy to work in this kind of way because of the the need to both listen in a serious kind of way, in, in deep sorts of ways. Um, and um, and the other one is, a, you know, genuine loss of power, particularly in terms of, um, for, um, you know, white, middle class, male, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, um, yeah, just a, a, just a warning, a, a warning, if you like, just a reflection from my experience that uh, uh, that we need to be careful uh, out there and that uh, 
um, it's not so easy to listen the way that we're being required to do. And it takes uh, time and mm -hmm. support. And that's kind of safe space that uh, the, the panel spoke about. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you're, 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 you're right. You're correct. You know, many, many, many of those people who have been trained are doing exactly what you are saying. They're working for big, big business. Yeah. So the, 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 this, this is why, you know, the, 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 the spiritual aspect is, is always be so important. Yeah. Uh, you know, if there is, the, if there is a, and uh, an unanswered method of work, you know, the method was fantastic. Sally would wake up uh, very early in the morning, had two hours of reading, reading in link with what has been happening. You know, reading, getting the things, and then when Sally woke up, they would sit at table, and she would summarize what she had been reading. And then they would reflect how how what what in the, what came out would would respond to one of the of, of the of the challenges. You know what I mean? So th this is why the, that 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 process kept going on. But of course, as 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 you say, it is with what spirit you are doing it. And and I'm sorry that many 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 NGOs are in fact are using are using those kind of methodologies in fact to control people and 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 to enrich themselves. Uh, that is where I am when I'm living here. It's that lot. Yeah. Thanks, Philip. Um, again, as I say, if there's others that like to jump in, feel free. I was just going to I see Ashish Chol again from the YCW in Adelaide. I don't know if you'd like to ask a question, Ashish, or make any comment. Feel free to jump in if you do. Thank you, Stefan. Um, just a one reflection. We in Australian YCW we recently did a listening camping with our young people. Um, we wanted to make sure that we are using the right word, which they kind of like to relate to. One thing that we realized is young people do not want to uh, become a member of of a group. They they kind of like are scared of that commitment. Rather, they choose to become a volunteer. Um, we also ask them what do they think about movement and their reflection about movement is different, you know, in, in terms of what we are discussing about or what we have learned about. So there is a challenge, especially in, in terms of Australian context for young people to come and to better organize. Um, and we from in YCW, we use Caesars and ACT methodology to do it. Is there, I know there is not a, you know, um, a kind of like a methodology that, you know, um, you know, Paula used, but is there a core principle that you would like to follow when you are especially trying to organize young people to bring them to that level of awareness of it's really important to be organized and it's also from the faith perspective, that it's asking us to reflect on the systemic issue that's happening, and then to come to an action. That that's very difficult to answer. <laughs> okay, I can try to to try to to say something. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's answer. I gather this is a conversation. So Mara already spoke about deep listening. So the dialogue that Freire promotes and Anand Shelley has spoken is, is not a dialogue argumentative, is that deep listening with empathy, with love that taps into human values and spiritual values. So while engaging with youth, we cannot promote organizing. Either they we, we listen to them, uh, their spaces, they share in small groups in twos and threes, they come, they come up with what they want, and we co-create something new. That cannot be what we did in the 70s, the 80s, 90s, we're 2023. So we will have to be extremely open to what is new. Of course, intergenerational dialogue brings about uh, can bring about a bombastic positive 
thing in the world, but it has to be a mutual uh, uh, um, a mutual way. The, the, the things we use, like appreciative inquiry, where people really find themselves, or um, these reflective processes, allow even them to define what is a movement. Yeah, and if we start from them, and then maybe from a, a, a elder perspective, give other input or insights from previous uh, uh, occasions, then it might be uh, easier to move forward. Not sure if I'm making uh, sense, Ashish, or, or how it is. Thanks. Yeah, can I add something? Yeah, go, I'm not go, yep. so young, but I was I was once young. So I think um, the safe spaces, without naming it, whether it's not calling it an organization or anything, just that safe space. Um, for instance, we worked with one young woman who was working with the homeless in Cape Town. So what she thought the homeless needed was that they needed food. They needed to go to a place where they would be having counseling. And so she presented to us that plan. And we said to her, well, just go and listen, go and listen. And she discovered that the homeless people wanted spaces to go and dance to do exercise, to relax, to have fun. So the counseling that she was working with the social worker was her perception of what those young people wanted. All they wanted was to have some sport, to go to the gym, to have fun. But in that process, during the breaks, then they would talk about what really matters. So creating those spaces where young people want to be and listening will will make uh, will make them find what they want. What Freddie says, put them <coughs> in the center of their struggle, and don't do anything that people can do for themselves. Never do that. Thanks, Tommy. Did you want to speak again, Ashish? I saw your was that your hand up. Or were you just agreeing? Oh, I'm just all agreeing to it. Thank you. Just agreeing. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just having a look around to see if there's anybody else wants to put their hand uh, up. Oh, go on. Sorry, think, did you want to say something? I think we should uh, understand that, uh, again, coming back to the whole question of Laudate Si and caring for the earth, I've actually found young people are so much more aware of the need for action in this area. And I think that one of the dialogues that we can use amongst the young people in YCW is to actually look at those goals, um, pull out the social justice part of it, for instance, and then have a, then the whole question is looking at uh, the community in which that each of the young people live and then get a sense of what's actually happening there. But always look at, so that's the C part again. You judge it against the data C and the gospel, and you act upon it in some sort of positive way. So it's it's looking at the at the real the real things that are affecting people within the community of young people. I know that in working with YCW in South Africa, um, that was a very, very, very um, challenging because it was during, during the apartheid era, but within that whole process, um, they became more aware of the need to do something about, for instance, work, uh, in the South African apartheid context. And some of the work that was done by, by Albert Danker was just superb along those lines. Thanks, Tony. Well, I see that we're getting pretty close to 90 minutes now, so I think we've probably better 
um, uh, kind of start to wind up. I just ask uh, if Philip, would you like to say a few final words or Jinoka or Ndombi uh, before we close? I, I mean, as, as a man, I can't have the last word, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say something about about the the the, the method. No, uh, explain how how Alan and Sally work together. Uh, there there are there are there are now five volumes. It the 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 there are the first three volumes, but then there are new volumes added as soon as as there is something new coming up, a new challenge coming up, and then there's a group working on it. And uh, what, what what is put in the book is uh, kind of what are the best practices. Eh? So it's a kind of sharing of, of best practices uh, on, on this, on that issue. Uh, and the danger, the other danger, which is, is that uh, book number two has been a very dangerous book because it, it is about, about uh, organizing groups. You can use the things to control groups instead of liberating them. So we're always fighting that you should not stop at, 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 book, at book two, no? and you have to go through the whole thing. Thank you, Philip. Actually, I, I've just seen that there's one person who has one last question. That's Irene. Before I ask Jinoka and Tombi to say last word, would you like to ask your question, Irene? Hi, it wasn't more of a question. Um, I'm from the um, a YCW, the Australian YCW, and I'm currently the vice president at Sydney, Australia. And I also work for the Young Christian Students. And I just wanted to sort of um, like affirm what Tony was saying about young people and about how we need to sort of um, incorporate like social justice because a lot of young people and especially a lot of young students actually have so much passion for young um, for social justice but they actually don't know what they're passionate about is social justice and something that I've been working really closely with the groups with the local groups here has been sort of connecting social justice issues whether that be systematic issues or their personal issues and sort of connecting them together um, and seeing them and helping them to see that there is a bigger picture that's in play um, and that's something that's helped tremendously through the methodology that we use here. Um, and yeah, I just sort of wanted to affirm that because as a young person who's also been part of the movement for quite some time since when I was in high school and out of high school now with the young Christian workers, it's something that was instilled to me um, and something that I've realized at a very young age where a lot of my personal issues actually came from a lot of social justice issues, which I didn't realize were systematic issues. And um, and growing up in the movement and sort of learning these skills to think critically and um, to know my personal values and where, where the passion came from was really important in my formation as a young adult now and sort of empowering the youths around me. So... Yeah, I just wanted to sort of touch on that. And thank you so much for sharing um, to all the panelists. Um, I think breaking the chain of um, silence was something that really reached out to me a lot. And that's something that we're trying to break here. Um, at least the work that I'm trying to do with the students and with the young people around me. I think there's been a lot of oppression with young people and having to stay silent about um, issues that are happening that's affecting them and will affect their future, but people telling them that, you know, they're too young to do anything about it. But I think it all starts with discussion and with dialogue. And yeah, it's really great, the work that you've done. So thank you so much. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. Well, let me hand over to Janoka now, can I? Okay, <laughs> I just want, I won't speak much, but uh, uh, on Irene was saying the work with young people, we actually thought that today we would have young people. I'm just going to quickly share one exercise that we thought of doing with the young people. We work a lot with the head and the hands and the heart. So because our, our way is always through questioning, we, with each group, create new things. There are no such thing as, because the process is, is all about uh, um, uh, uh, creativity. 
So Irene, if you would like to work with the younger group on the head side, what is the understanding that brings them together today? What informs them as a young Christian activist? And those questions they will answer by themselves and then in smaller groups, and then they will come up with their own perspective for us to understand them better. Also, what feelings and emotions do you, as a young person, experience in your activism? And how do you respond to those emotions? On the hand side, because these are not intellectual processes, not only emotional, you could even say spiritual, whatever processes or own feelings, and, but we aim action and they are in action. What are the actions that you carried as a young Christian worker that encourage you to grow in your faith, your service for justice and curiosity to understand God? So those, if the group today was a young group, those would be the questions we would be posing and discussing about. Uh, and that is just a teaser in if you I mean you would like to use with others or anybody from my side uh, is just has been a major pleasure here and I hope we'll keep engaging somehow in the future uh, uh, through processes of dialogue deep listening and it has been a, a beautiful experience of uh, um, hearing each other's uh, uh, comments and experiences of prairie, of training for transformation, of the grail, of everything each one is doing. And I'll hand over to my senior in Tombi, <laughs> because even though being a woman, we always have a respect for the elders. <laughs> Tombi is more mature than I am. Ah, Jinoka, you want me to say I'm an old woman? No, I'm young at heart. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, I will be coming to Australia in in November. I have a medical thing to check up. We can, if um, I get your your email, if you send your email to TFT in practice, those I will be in Tasmania. Some would say the North Tasmania. I will be in Sydney, and um, I might be in Melbourne. So within those regions, perhaps we can have, do you say coffee? I don't know in Australia, yes, how you please. call it. And yes, please. I, I'm in Sydney, yeah, so I'd be happy it to. It would be lovely to see some of the young people you are talking with. And um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing, meeting with some of you, God willing. I think um, for me, as a person who also went through the TFT process. One thing we know is that the safe spaces for sharing narratives is a healing space. People heal. They open up about their wounds and they heal together with others. And I think um, the mantra the, the TFT people used to use was that especially the young people, it begins with me. Change begins with me. I am not going to change another person. Another person is going to be attracted to the changed me. When they ask me why, that's when then I talk about training for transformation. I thought that was really powerful. And I think that's the micro of you see. You have to see it yourself, see you and have a dialogue with you and a dialogue with your neighbor. And in that process, you will be judging and your interventions are not only about you, but you can't disappear in the collective. You have to be the individual that is part of the collective and a collective that is made out of individuals who respect each other, listen to the power of the other person. It is true, the method is 
dangerous. In two ways, people can be incarcerated by helping people to question the systemic and the structural oppression. That can get people incarcerated, even disappear. Don't ask me too much. I live in that kind of zone. And then the other side of the danger could be your institutions, your World Bank, your whoever, taking these methodologies as marketing tools to protect um, profit making, to protect exploitation, because it's about dialogue. So those are the dangers that we live with, but it cannot stop us. We have to keep moving, walk up the river, as the other person has said. But thank you. I loved being in this space. I hope that um, we can do this before God calls any of us on the screen. Yeah? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Ndombi and Yanoka and Philip. Yeah, well, look, I feel actually it has been a grace-filled event and it's just fantastic. I was able to uh, meet Philip again in unex almost unexpectedly in Mauritius a couple of months ago. So, yeah, look, I really hope we can continue this. I'm, I, I have all of your email addresses from your registrations, so I'm happy to put you in contact with each other individually and maybe collectively under the theme of training for transformation. And it's really great to hear that you're going to be coming to Australia in Tombi. So, yeah, I will definitely put you in touch with uh, our friends in Sydney and Melbourne and any other state that you might be able to visit. So once again, I'd like to thank you all for being with us tonight. And uh, yeah, I look forward to some more collaboration and dialogue and listening in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. That's what, try, that was great. Thanks. Yes, it was thanks, great. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.